Amen. Good morning, church. How are we feeling this morning? Yes? Oh, good. That's a good day. It's a good day. Imagine with me for a moment that you, perhaps in the middle of the night, are confronted by a being that you don't recognize. You don't know what it is, whether it's friend or foe, whether it's monstrous or friendly. You don't know. And this being shows itself to you and claims that it is a messenger from the creator of the universe. And this being tells you that this creator has a job for you, has something that this creator wants you to do. And imagine that this task will most certainly lead to ridicule. And not just ridicule from people that you don't really know or people that you wouldn't consider friends, but ridicule from people that you do know. Ridicule perhaps from even your religious brothers and sisters. And imagine being called up to something like this. What would you say? Some have responded to this call with sayings such as, you've got the wrong person. I'm not the one for this job. I'm not skilled enough or eloquent enough. Some have responded, this burden is too much for me to bear. And this is why when we see Mary's words and her response to this incredible calling on her life, her words look that much more magnificent and powerful. Her response is, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said, I will do whatever the Lord wants. What he has asked of me, what he has said of me, I'm on board with it. And these words are inspiring. And we, the reader, are meant to be encouraged to say something like this to God as well. He has a calling on all of our lives. Maybe no deity is shown up in some body of light or in the middle of the night, but the word of God, the calling of God, has shown up in all of our lives. It's shown up through his word. It's shown up through his church. We have all received a calling. God has a job for you. One that is not easy. If it's been easy, then you're missing something. This calling is a calling to obedience, to live a life of love, and selflessness, life of grace. And ideally, we respond to this calling the same way that Mary did. Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. But how? How did Mary say this? How was she able to say this? This is crazy. Mary's crazy, y'all. A being shows up and says, hey, You're going to give birth to God. God is coming into this world through your baby. And she hasn't been with a man. She's a virgin. That's insane. And she says, yep, that checks out. Good with that. That's nuts, man. How? How was she able to respond like this? Was it because Mary was just that brave? Is it because that she's just that impressive of a, of a person, of a teenage girl, no less? She's just that brave of a person? Or perhaps she really just doesn't care what people think of her. I mean, imagine being pregnant outside of marriage as a 14-year-old. I mean, it's kind of funny. We talk about how crazy it would have been in that culture at that time. It's crazy in this culture at this time, okay? It's crazy anywhere and any reason, all right? It's nuts, and it's difficult. Is it that she just really didn't care what people would say of her? Probably not. She was a teenage girl. Maybe she was born with it. Maybe it was Maybelline. I don't know. But more than likely, more than likely, I think Mary was a normal person. I think she was a normal person with normal fears like anyone else, insecurities, and imperfections. So... How did she do it? How was she able to respond like this to the calling of God? Because she believed in God. She trusted God. Her faith 
most definitely was present before that night. She trusted God. It probably wasn't because she was so brave. It probably had nothing to do with not caring what other people think of her. It's because she truly believed. And I've been infatuated with this word, believe. This word believe has popped up all over the place. You know how uh, when your friend gets like a new car, and like, like a Toyota mm, Yaris or whatever, and you start seeing that car everywhere? Okay, that car's been there, yes? That car's been on the road, but all of a sudden you start noticing it. That's kind of what's happened to me with this word believe. After I've really dived into it, I realized this word has been showing up all over the place. In fact, two weeks ago, I talked about that word believe just a little bit. Jesus says, repent and believe when his kingdom is coming. And as I discussed a few weeks ago, belief is about who you are. Belief is a journey. It's not just a one-time decision. Now, in the Hebrew language, the word belief, or believe, is oman. Oman. Which sounds like in English it's spelled oman. But it's pronounced oman. And that's actually where we get the word amen from. The Hebrew oman which we often translate to believe, means faithful, steady, and true, consistent. It's less about a worldview. It's much less about a set of beliefs. It has everything to do with what you build your life around. Trusting in something has nothing to do with a set of beliefs. Trusting in something is what you put your life in. It's what you put your heart in. Belief is about who or what you trust. And true belief leads to emulation. True belief leads you to become like what you believe in. Mary clearly trusted and believed in a God who was good, kind, and humble. And therefore, she was able to be good, kind, and humble. Whether we realize it or not, this concept of belief is all around us. This message of belief is everywhere. It's in our music. It's in our stories. It's in our history. It's in all of our movies and shows. It kind of blows my mind how often we really see the word believe. And not only the word believe, but the concept of belief. This idea of trusting in something bigger than us. It's as if there is a human understanding that belief or faith in something good is necessary to have a better life. I think this makes a lot of sense. When life is hard, when life is scary, when things do not go according to plan, or when someone you did trust fails that trust, what is left but belief? What is left but faith, trust in something bigger than us? I think it's no surprise that we see this message all over the place. Without belief, we die. Maybe not literally in that moment, but emotionally, relationally. Without trust, without faith, relationships die. Whether we see it in that moment or not, they die. Without belief and without faith. And I believe the same is true in our relationship with the Heavenly Father. Without trust and without faith, without belief, that relationship dies. I think it's worth pointing out, the worldview doesn't go anywhere. It's easy to uphold a worldview, a list of things that you say are true. But without true belief... That relationship with the Heavenly Father dies. 
So, how do we get to be like Mary? How do we believe like Mary believed? How do we have the faith of Mary? The faith of Mary and the belief that she had is so important because it is through her belief, through her obedience, that the kingdom of God came into the world. The same is true of us today. It is through our belief and our trust in God that the kingdom of God, heaven, can show up in our lives and in the lives of those around us. How do we get to that belief? Belief does include a statement. There must be a time where you say, I believe. But there's something I've noticed about belief. True belief. It's not a guarantee if you say it. Just because you say it doesn't actually make it true for you. Belief is a journey. It is a journey of trust. It is consistently, constantly, faithfully confessing. It is faithfully saying, I believe. Not just once, but over and over throughout your life. The journey of belief is just that. A journey. It's a process. And it takes time. You have to think about it. You have to get emotional. You have to pray. You have to read. You have to learn. You have to grow. It's not a one-time moment. It is a lifelong journey. So my encouragement to you all this holiday season is to listen. The best way we move forward in this journey is through listening. Listening to wisdom and listening to the stories. The holiday season is the best time to believe. Everyone's talking about belief right now. All the movies, all the shows, the Christmas stories, and all the songs are about belief. It is so easy to tune them out. We see them every year. The same stories, the same songs, the same things playing on the radio. It's really easy to get used to it. There's a reason why in so many Christmas movies it's the adults that don't believe anymore. And it's the children that are full of that belief. Because the adults, man, they've been through 40 Christmases. Okay, they've seen it, been there, done that. It's really easy to get used to it. My encouragement to you all this holiday season is to listen. Watch those holiday movies. Listen to those Christmas songs. And look for that message of belief. And allow yourself to move forward on that journey. Allow, use it to help you navigate where you are with your own belief. Is your belief strong right now? Praise God. Is your faith strong? Is your confidence high? Awesome. Are you wrestling with doubts? Are there things that you don't understand that you're uncertain of that's hindering your belief? Or perhaps what I think is the most common in our culture, I think most often we repress or suppress our doubts. I think we often try to ignore our doubts because they're scary, and they are. They're very difficult, and Processing those doubts is what puts you on the journey. And the journey is full of peril. The journey is not easy. You will be pushed to your own limits. It will be difficult. But if you don't face it, by the way, that belief will be hindered. You've got to wrestle with those doubts. You've got to wrestle with that struggle. So, my encouragement to you all this holiday season is to listen. Listen to those stories. And by doing so, your belief probably will get a bit stronger. And if you have the faith, the belief that these heroes of the faith, heroes like Mary, had, you will find that God 
will use you to bring his kingdom into your life and the lives of those around you. And that's exactly what happened with Mary. God saw her faith. She trusted. And through her, God brought our king into the world. So listen and believe this holiday season. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And God, we thank you so much for these stories. We thank you so much for this holiday season, this opportunity that we all have to grow in our belief, to grow in our trust. God, give us that childlike wonder again of the world around us. Place in our hearts that excitement for gifts this holiday season. And ultimately, Lord, the true gift that you are, the true gift of your kingdom. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name.